Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Wednesday, the 15th day of May, year of our Lord, 2024. I do pray this finds you on this beautiful spring day. I have the window open right next to me. Maybe in the background you can hear, oh man, the, the tree frogs all uh, chirping away tonight. I have a couple up on my deck upstairs and uh, they're so small. They're very cool, looking at gray, and they've got a little flecks of yellow. And yet when they when they sing, it's amazing. These little animals, how loud they get in their throat gets yeah, it, it really expanded. There's something to see. They rarely do it when they're that close to you, but it, you can't miss it. It's very, very loud. Very cool. Still waiting for the cicada to emerge. That's a few weeks away. For us, the soil is still quite cool. Um, Anyway, Feast of Pentecost is coming Sunday, and that'll end Easter season. We'll celebrate the Holy Trinity thereafter. That'll be Memorial Day weekend this year, and then begin the season of Pentecost. Uh, and, and remember, every time we gather in church, particularly for the divine service, it is Easter for us. It is always a celebration of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And tonight, we are going to read in its entirety, there's a portion of the psalm signed for this day, but we're, we're going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read it and, uh, instead of singing it to you, and it is the 118th psalm. And I'm going to turn to this book that I use quite frequently. This is Reading the Psalms of Luther, produced by Concordia Publishing House. I encourage you to get a copy of that. And I'm going to start by reading Luther's comments on this psalm and then read through the psalm in its entirety. The 118th psalm is a, a psalm of thanks and my dearest, most beloved, Convitamini, the Latin title of the psalm. It gives thanks and also prophesies of the Christian and of Christ, the rejected cornerstone. This psalm is a general statement of thanksgiving for all the kindness God daily and unceasingly showers on men, both good and evil. This psalm praises God, especially for the greatest benefit he bestowed on the world, namely for Christ and his kingdom of grace first promised and now revealed. And that's Luther's comments on the psalm. And now I will read through the psalm. And it is one of the longer psalms, apart from the 119th psalm, it is 29 verses. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side, I will fear not. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surround me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. That is quite a beautiful psalm, and we don't have time tonight to do it justice. We could spend days on that and not begin to approach it. It is one of Luther's favorite psalms. It's one of my favorite psalms. It finds its, uh, itself quoted a number, number of times in Scripture. It finds itself uh, figuring prominently in the life of the church, as it always has. Uh, this was sung frequently by the ancients. It is sung frequently by us. They were looking forward. We were looking, we're looking over our shoulders at what happened for us. And quite a beautiful psalm. And it begins with, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. And we see, we see this grouping of threes at the beginning. Um, and, it, and Hebrew poetry doesn't deal with rhymes and, and meter. It deals with thoughts and, and the parallels and thoughts. Now, there is definitely rhyming that happens, and, and it's lost to us in, in Hebrew unless you see the Hebrew. Uh, uh, there's plays on words, things like that, but uh, well, that's kind of lost to us in the translation. But you still pick up this, especially at the beginning of the psalm, this, this, the, this grouping of threes, and that tells us the various themes that are being woven together within the psalm. So we start with this bracketing. This is the phrase that's repeated at the, that is repeated at the end. Give thanks to the Lord. He is good. Kesed, his steadfast love endures forever. That Remember that word steadfast love, it's one word in Hebrew, is never describes us, it describes God. His love is steadfast. That means it doesn't change, it doesn't go away. And it, it endures forever, forever. The love of God for you is forever, and it doesn't change. Uh, even when we're punished by God, that's true, because it is his love that punishes. Love does not let us do whatever we want to do to our own destruction and to the destruction of our neighbors. Um, love corrects us, rebukes us, sometimes harshly. And the whole idea is to keep us in God until the day we stand before his throne and finally shuffle off this mortal coil. Anyway, then we see, let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. So that the nation, the priests, and let those who fear the Lord, which is us, Say his steadfast love endures forever. Look to the cross if you doubt that. Now we change. Out of my distress I called to the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. And then, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Or the Lord is on my side is my helper. I shall look and triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take, so we see again that grouping. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust the man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. And then we move to the thought, all nations surround me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. So no matter what the psalmist is saying, focus on the Lord. No matter what, focus on the Lord. Keep your trust in him, your hope in him. Remember what he has done. Remember his steadfast love. And we hear all the nations surround me, yet in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every, side, on every side, in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. And that is, of course, speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ, who all things have been placed under his feet. Uh, and he destroys not only uh, the power of Satan over us, and ultimately Satan will be destroyed, but the power of death over us. I mean, Satan has been defeated already. That is the reality we live in. He doesn't want to admit that. He certainly doesn't want you to know that. So he fights against us, fights against God's church. But remember, Cling to the church because God's love is steadfast and he has already defeated these principalities and power of darkness. They surrounded by me like bees. They went out like fire among thorns. But the name of the Lord cut them off. And where's our help to be found? In us, in our strength, in our spiritual prowess? No, in the Lord, in his name. We begin our divine service by calling on that name, by invoking. In his name has been placed on you in your baptism. That is your strength. I think of, and I, as you read this, you think of many things. When you think of Ephesians chapter 6, you put on the full armor of God. Remember, you're putting on all the gifts of God. All the gifts of God are put on you. Things that happen in your baptism, his name written on you, you know, you're given his word and everything. And this is how you 
toward the attacks of evil. It's fiery darts. This is how they're extinguished. Not by you being a better soldier than Satan or not, let me tell you. But by Christ and his word, which has already defeated him. Remember, his word tells us everything. Brings to our mind. And the spirit is working through that word. The word is not like something that just lies idle. God works through it. He promises us that. He tells us that. And through this, we stand. Through this, you know, we make it through because we stand in that. And God has done the fighting for us, and it's already completed. Uh, I pushed. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. Again, look to our Lord Jesus Christ and see, you know, what's the ultimate falling that we will do? We'll fall into our graves, and yet still there we are helped because the power of the grave has been destroyed. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. And I think um, there's a... There's a, a, a wonderful song, but we need to do more of this at Emmanuel. We do, we, 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 we do. We have wonderfully gifted singers and organists and uh, musicians, and uh, we do this once in a while. It'd be cool to do it more. I know it's a small church, but we have very talented people. But um, there are uh, various settings of psalms, this being one of them, where the congregation would sing the refrain, and the body of the psalm, uh, is sung by a cantor because sometimes it's very intricately in, intricately composed. So, the Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. And then the uh, the psalm would go on from there. But just what a wonderful thing to have our brains to keep repeating as we sing the psalm. We keep repeating. I remember, you know, um, uh, it's just part of me. I've heard it so frequently. It's just a beautiful part. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my song. The song of the Lord's salvation is always on my lips. And he has become my salvation. Of course, that's Christ. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. There you see that repetition again. Um, I shall not die, but I shall live. Now, that's true for us in Christ. But it's ultimately speaking of the Christ. You know, that, uh, uh, that he shall live and, and recount to us the deeds of the Lord, what he's done and what uh, he's done for us. Uh, because of the will of the Father, to have us with him forever. Open to me the gates. Uh, yeah, the, the Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Remember, Christ receives the punishment that we deserve. Uh, but he was not given over to death. He just paid the price for us. What, what a remarkable thing. He did experience death, uh, but then broke it open. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them. I give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. And only one is righteous. And only one can enter through it. That under through it, and that's Christ. That's why he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You come through his blood, you're in. Remember when he died, what happened to that, you know, what's being spoken? The gate. What is that? What is that? You know, think of the curtain. You know, what separates us from God in the temple? What separates us from where, from where God would be? That, that temple between the whole the holy place and the altar was and the, and the courtyard of the temple and then, you know, the surrounding community from the most holy place where God would be sitting upon the ark, resting upon the ark of the covenant. You know, only Christ can go through that veil. Uh, and when the high priest goes through that veil, once a year he is doing the sacrifices, he's being covered with blood, all these sacrifices being all pointing forward to Christ. But Christ tears open the veil so, so through Christ we can enter. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's not exclusionary. That's a statement of the gospel. Come through me. My burden is easy. You know, my yoke is light. Why? Because he has done all the work. We come through Christ. We can stand in the presence of the Father without fear, with a clean conscience, not because we're sinless, but because of who Christ is, because we are covered with the blood of Christ, and he put our sin to death in him. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. In your baptism, you are declared, you are covered with the righteousness of Christ. So I can look at you on Sunday morning and say you are perfectly holy if you're a baptized Christian because you are covered with the holiness of Christ. Now, your heart would tell another story, as would mine. But the reality is that in Christ, you are perfectly holy. Perfectly. And in that perfect holiness, you can stand before the God, who is also perfectly holy, and do so without fear of death. The stone the builders rejected, Christ, has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day. So what day is that? Today? Well, yes, in a sense, but... You know, that doesn't quite capture it. This is the day the Lord has made. What day? The day of his crucifixion. That's the day we rejoice in Good Friday. You know, because that's when all this comes true for us. And it's, and it's given to us. And we, you know, the, the, the resurrection shows that what he did on the cross, you know, accomplished what it was intended to accomplish. 
And then in the life of the church, the proclamation of the words of baptism to the reception of the Lord's Supper, uh, this becomes ours. Uh, that's the day the Lord has made. So yes, every day we can rejoice in because of that day. You know, that day. You know, because how does it go on? Uh, it, uh, you know, um, uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's, when is that declared unto Jesus? Well, he's making the triumphal entry. You know, so uh, beginning of his passion, he, uh, and by the end of the week, he'll be dead. Uh, he'll be crucified. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Just, or, and then the psalm ends with, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. You, know, you see that steadfast love manifest in Christ our Lord and everything he says to you about who he is and what he has done for you. Beautiful psalm, that 119th. So, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for marriage and your families, that husbands and wives, parents and children live in ordered harmony not according to the whims of the world and the definitions of the world, but according to your word, the word of God. We pray that we would uphold this gift, find our voices to defend this gift, for it is a great gift. We pray for parents who must raise children alone in the most difficult and lonely of tasks. We pray that you would keep them from falling into despair uh, and other great sin, but you would uphold them and be with us, their brothers and sisters in Christ, that we may help them as you give us the ability to do so. We pray that we would be a blessing in upholding these gifts to the communities and neighborhoods in which we live, that we would be the salt and the light, and that we would uphold these gifts because we know they are from you and that they are blessed and a good thing for our communities. As always, we pray for those who are crying out to you. We pray for Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Ardo, Lou Ray, Pat, Nan, as there are brothers and sisters in Christ, my brothers in office, Jeff and Robert, dear friends of our congregation, Al, Aaron, M, Ruth, Betty, Jeremy, Paul, Joan, Bob, Jenny, Luke, Aaron, Allison, Allie, Fern, Don, Amy, Jason, Camden, Ashley, Scott, Jim, Tom, Eric, Beth, Marlis, Dylan, Jeff, Christy, Brad, Clint, Anita, Dave, Karen, Sue, Tim, Bert, Heather, John, Chris, Lori, Don, Liberty, Joe, Phil, Katie, Michelle, Bethany, Amber, Tyler, and all who cry out to you. According to your good and gracious will, place your healing hand upon them. And since it's Wednesday, too, we are going to pray for uh, life. Dear gracious Father, source of all life, grant us forgiveness for our failures to protect the lives of the helpless and the innocent. Dispatch your holy angels to safeguard the unborn babies presently under the shadow of death. Show your mercy to mothers who are alone and afraid and grant them the courage and the resolve they need to choose life for their little ones. Hear us, O Lord, for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose blood cleanses us from even the most grievous sins. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. 
Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn to 738, Lord of all hopefulness. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares could destroy, be there at our waking, and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plane and the lathe, be there at our labors, and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. Lord of all kindliness, Lord of all grace, your hands swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our homing, and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm, be there at our sleeping, and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. Lord of all hopefulness, with that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.